Good morning. This is uh, going to be our conclusion of our teaching that we've been doing on Isaiah chapter 53, or the prophet's real name is Yasha Yahu. And um, we're going to pick up and start just go over some verses we've already read, but I want to try to read through all the verses that we have not covered yet before we get through on today's teaching. And uh, we'll start at verse 4. It says, Surely he, talking about that this is a, a prophetic uh, prophecy about the coming Messiah. And by the way, this was written about 700 years before the Mashiach showed up on the earth to fulfill this prophecy. And this is who it's about, Yahusha, our Mashiach. And it says, Surely he hath borne our pains and carried our sicknesses. Now, we talked about the fact that those two words, griefs and sorrows, have been mistranslated into English as griefs and sorrows. And we talked about the fact is that the, the word for sorrow is the Hebrew word makab, and it's Hebrew number 4341. And uh, as I mentioned previous a number of times, that uh, certain Hebrew words have more than just one meaning. They actually can mean two different things. And the only way you can tell is by reading the context of the scriptures to get uh, insight into which translation should have been used. And in this particular case, it should have been the word for makab should have been translated as uh, pains. Surely uh, he has a man acquainted. He is, excuse me. Surely he hath borne our pains and carried our. The next word is sickness. Now the word for sickness is the Hebrew number of four, uh, Hebrew 2483, which is the Hebrew word koli, and uh, it should have been translated um, as sickness and not as sorrows. So, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of, and it says here in our English translation, God, but we use the Hebrew word aluahim, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions you know he was not wounded for himself he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities we've talked about the fact is that the hebrew word for iniquity is the hebrew uh, word avon it's hebrew number five seven seven one and the important thing to know about this ver i mean this word here and when I learned this many years ago, it really just uh, oh, it made a difference in, in the way I perceived and understood what, Ye what Yahusha had done for me. It's not only the word iniquity, as far as the English word here, um, as we would think of sin and uh, wrongdoing, um, guilt. It actually, it means, if you read, look this up in a concordance, you'll see that the word actually means the punishment of the iniquity. And we've talked about it, and the fact is that um, when Cain killed Abel, if you go back to Genesis, I believe, chapter 4, you'll find this, that Yahuwah, uh, because of uh, Cain's um, crime that he had done against his brother, um, there was a curse placed upon him in the, uh, or because of the iniquity of his sin. And he made reference, Cain did, that the, the, the punishment that was proclaimed upon him was greater than he said that he could bear. And, but the word their punishment is the word iniquity, or, I mean, excuse me, the Hebrew word avon, which is also translated iniquity here in Isaiah chapter 53. So with that understanding, you understand that iniquity, when he, what it says here in the scriptures that he bore our iniquities, it's meaning much more than just bearing sin for us. It's talking about he bore the punishment that was due our iniquities. And then it says the chastisement of our peace or the chastisement that was necessary for our peace. Now the word actually here is shalom. As far as for the peace, for our peace, it's actually talking about um, not just being peaceful in a peace in a situation where you could be stressful, but you that you're in a state of tranquility or something like that, it's much more involved. The word actually shalom actually in, in Hebrew means much more than just peace. It means completeness. It means not lacking anything. It's being being totally uh, content, totally uh, fulfilled, totally not lacking any good thing. And um, 
So the, the chastisement that was necessary for us to bring us to the place of being in Shalom was that Yahusha paid the price for our sins, the iniquity of our sins, or the punishment for our sins in order for us to gain that Shalom, that completeness, that wholeness that we have. <laughs> oh, this is so wonderful. Uh, this is, and this is not talking about once we die and get to heaven. Now that's going to be, that's going to happen, of course. But you know, there there are promises that you and I can partake of and receive the benefit from them in this life. If we first have to know about them, you can't, you know, partake of something that you don't know belongs to you. I've used this example many times. If I had uh, put a thousand dollars into your checking account but I never told you about it and you never checked your bank statement to find out that there was an extra thousand dollars in your checking account. Well, what good is that thousand dollars going to do you? None. Well, it's the same with all the provisions that Yahuwah has made for us. If we don't know them and don't understand that they're for us, even in this, while we're here on this earth in order to receive the benefits from them, how can we partake of them unless we know about them first? <laughs> So that's why I'm sharing with you to, to inform you of what belongs to you and what you can partake of even now. In other words, let's finish reading. I'll get to the point I'm trying to make here. It says, and with his stripes or with his bruise is the word that actually should be tr better translated the bruise or and the word actually means to break or to, to break in pieces, to crush. It says, and with his bruise, we... Who's the we? All of us, we are healed. <laughs> now, I, I share with you that that's not talking about spiritual healing, which a lot of people want to say that that's what that means. No. In fact, the Hebrew word is the Hebrew number uh, 7495, which is the Hebrew word Rapha. Now, I, I just finished a number of, of teaching or session on Yahuwah. Rapha is our healer because that's who Yahuwah declared himself to be to the nation of Yasharel back in the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 he said I am Yahuwah Rapha your healer now before he said that he was talking about the he would not allow the diseases to come upon the nation of Yasharel if they followed him in his footsteps followed his commandments and did what he said as his and he says as the as the Egyptians, as the diseases came upon them, he said he would protect and be Yahuwah Rapha to the children of Yasharel. So the word actually Rapha here that's used in the prophecy here of Yashayahu 53.5 where it says, with his stripes we are healed, it is talking about physical healing. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, we doesn't say we're going to be healed, but we are healed. Now, here's the thing to understand. We are the healed. Now, Satan is trying to inflict sickness and disease upon you because he's a thief and because he's a liar. And Yahushua himself said the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Sickness and disease will kill you. It will steal from you. It will, you know, uh, it will bring destruction upon you and misery and pain. And we've already read that surely he has borne our pains and carried our sicknesses. Yahushua did that for us so that we would not have to bear them. Now, the scripture declares that we're to resist Shatan and the Shatan will flee from us. So he will come about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So he may come at you with sickness and disease but you don't have to tolerate it in your body. If you have the revelation and the understanding of what belongs to you, then you have the then you're empowered to resist the works of the enemy. You're empowered to quote the scriptures to him. You could say, it is written, just like the Mashiach did when Shatan came at, at Yahusha in the wilderness. And how did the Mashiach combat him? He said, it is written. And that's the same thing that we as believers need to resist the enemy by declaring what's written. It is written by his stripes, talking about the Mashiach, we are healed. <laughs> so.
So healing belongs to us. It's provided. The thief is coming to try to enforce sickness and disease upon all mankind, whether they're believers or not believers. But unfortunately, a lot of believers do, do not know and understand what belongs to them because this has already been fulfilled. This has already taken place. And Yahuwah wants you and I to know that. He even said that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. In other words, they don't know. They do not know. And so that's why we're here today is to share the truth of the word of Yahuwah so you would know what belongs to you. I'm going to have to stop here. We're not going to get through on this one segment with the rest of these verses, so we'll, we'll have to continue this on in our next one. But that's okay. We don't want to rush through it and uh, not cover everything that needs to be said. So I thank you this morning for joining with us. And uh, it's just a nice, beautiful day out here. It's about probably about 60 degrees, maybe even not that warm. And, uh, and uh, so I hope it's nice where you're at. And uh, I uh, hope that you are blessed today and all that you do and all that you put your hands to recognize that Yahuwah if Yahuwah be for us who can be against us Shalom